Hello everyone, welcome back to our channel. Celebrities who died today, in the last 24 hours, we've received somber news about the passing of extraordinary talents. Today we dedicate this episode to honoring their memories. Before we begin, we ask for your support. If their stories resonate with you, please show your respect by giving this video a thumbs up. And if you haven't already, consider subscribing to stay connected with our updates. Your support means a lot. Thank you. Number 1. Richard Howard Richard Howard was born on March 8, 1944, in Hitchin, Hertfordshire. He attended the Bristol Old Vic Theatre School, where he trained as an actor before performing on stage. He also taught at the same school and at the Royal Academy of Dramatic Art, RADA, later in his life. Howard was a star of many Olivia-nominated productions, including Shakespeare in Love, an adaptation of the 1998 film, where he played Sir Robert de Lesseps at the Noel Coward Theatre. He also appeared in Stanley, a play about the painter Sir Stanley Spencer, which won an Olivia for Best New Play in 1997 at the National Theatre. Howard was also known for his work in Shakespeare's plays, such as Twelfth Night, Macbeth, and Romeo and Juliet, which he toured across America, Europe, and Asia. He was a member of several theatre companies, such as the Stables Theatre Club in Manchester Field Day and the Jill Freud Theatre Company, where he acted and directed. Besides his theatre work, Howard also had some notable TV and radio appearances, such as in Emmerdale, where he played Bob Jerome between 1979 and 1981, Porot, where he appeared in an episode titled Four and Twenty Blackbirds, and The People's Princess, a radio play about George Ivey's wife Caroline of Brunswick. Sadly, Richard Howard passed away on January 29, 2024, at the age of 79, after a short illness. Richard Howard was a versatile and talented actor who left a lasting impression on the stage and screen. He is survived by his son, three stepdaughters, and nine grandchildren. He will be greatly missed by his fans, colleagues, and family. Number 2. Arn Hegefers Arn Hegefers was born on 4 July 1942 in Gothenburg, Sweden. He had a passion for sports since his childhood and even had a contract offer from a French football club, OGC Nice. However, a serious knee injury ended his playing career and he decided to pursue journalism instead. He started his career as a reporter for local newspapers and radio stations before joining Sveriges Television SVT in 1969. He became one of the most popular and respected sports commentators in the country, covering many memorable events such as the Hazel Stadium disaster, the 1972 Olympic basketball final, and the 1994 World Cup. He was known for his witty and humorous style, often making jokes and puns that entertained the viewers. He also had a distinctive voice that made him instantly recognizable. He won several awards for his work, including the Stora Journalist Prizet in 1992 and the Kristallin's Honor Award in 2008. He retired in 2011 after 43 years of service at SVT. He also worked for Canal Plus and presented entertainment shows such as Cries and Det Comma Mira. He published a book about his life and career, entitled Rolf, En Gore Sagat in Cannes, in 2000. He was married to Kirsten Johansson since 1983 and had two children with her. He also had a child from a previous marriage. He was the brother of the journalist and author Stuart Higafos. Unfortunately, Arne Higafos passed away on 29 January 2024 at the age of 81. Arne Higafos was a legend in Swedish sports journalism and a beloved personality in the nation. He will be greatly missed by his family, friends, colleagues, and fans. Rest in peace, Arne Hegefers. Number 3. Samuel Pinheiro Guimarães Samuel Pinheiro Guimarães was born in Rio de Janeiro in 1939 
and graduated in legal and social sciences from the National Faculty of Law of the University of Brazil, currently UFRJ, in 1963, the year he joined Itamarati, the Brazilian Ministry of Foreign Affairs. He also received a master's degree in economics from Boston University, 1969. He served as the Secretary General of Foreign Affairs from 2003 to 2009. During the first two terms of President Lula, he was also the Minister of Strategic Affairs from 2009 to 2010 and the High Representative General of Makosha from 2011 to 2012. He was a prominent figure in the formulation and execution of Brazil's foreign policy, especially in the areas of regional integration, South-South cooperation, and defense of national sovereignty. He was also a critic of the U.S. influence in Latin America and the neoliberal policies imposed by international organizations. He was the author of several books and articles, such as Quinhentos Anos de Periferia, 500 Years of Periphery, and Desafios Brasileiros na Era dos Gigantes, Brazilian Challenges in the Era of Giants, where he analyzed the geopolitical and economic challenges faced by Brazil in the global scenario. He was honored and respected by many politicians, colleagues, students, and friends who praised his intelligence, courage, and dedication to the Brazilian cause. He was also a friend and partner of Celso Amorim, another influential Brazilian diplomat and former Minister of Foreign Affairs. Sadly, Samuel Pinheiro Guimarães passed away on January 29, 2024, at the age of 84. Samuel Pinheiro Guimarães was a man of vision, passion, and conviction, who devoted his life to the service of his country and its people. He left behind a remarkable legacy that will inspire future generations of Brazilian diplomats and citizens. Number 4. Brian Griffin Brian Griffin, one of the most influential British photographers of his generation. Brian Griffin was born in Birmingham in 1948 and studied photography in Manchester before starting his career as a freelance photographer in 1972. He became famous for his portraits of corporate executives, musicians, and celebrities, which often used surreal and playful elements to challenge the conventions of contemporary photography. He was also inspired by Renaissance painting, German Expressionist cinema, and the industrial landscape of the Midlands. Some of his most iconic works include the album covers for Depeche Mode's A Broken Frame, Echo, and The Bunnyman's Heaven Up Here, and Iggy Pop's Soldier, as well as the portraits of Elvis Costello, Brian May, Siouxsie Sioux, and Douglas Adams. He was named Photographer of the Decade by The Guardian newspaper in 1989 and received the Royal Photographic Society Centenary Medal in 2013. He also published more than 20 monographs of his work and exhibited in more than 50 international solo shows. His work is held in collections at the Victoria and Albert Museum, the National Portrait Gallery, and the Reykjavik Art Museum, among others. Brian Griffin passed away peacefully in his sleep on January 30, 2024, at the age of 75. He left behind a legacy of innovation, creativity, and humor that influenced generations of photographers and artists. He was also a patron of the Format Festival and a mentor to many young photographers. He will be greatly missed by his family, friends, and fans, but his work will live on as a testament to his vision and talent. Number 5. Tony Cedras Tony Cedras was born in 1952 in Elsie's River, Cape Province, Union of South Africa. He started his musical journey by singing in the local church choir and playing accordion. He later learned to play trumpet, guitar, and keyboard, and became a versatile and sought-after session player. He performed or recorded with various well-known artists, including Paul Simon, Harry Belafonte, Miriam Merkiba, Henry Threadgill, Muhal Richard Ebrams, Cassandra Wilson, Hugh Muskiller, Tony Bird, and Gigi. Tony Cedras was especially known for his exceptional skills on the accordion, 
an instrument that is not often associated with jazz. He brought a unique and distinctive sound to the genre, blending African rhythms and melodies with jazz improvisation and harmony. He was also a talented composer and arranger who contributed to many albums and projects. Tony Sedras was a humble and generous man who shared his passion and knowledge with many young musicians. He was a mentor and a friend to many and a respected figure in the jazz community. He toured the world as a musician, but he never forgot his roots and his culture. He was proud of his South African heritage and he used his music as a way of expressing his identity and his values. Unfortunately, Tony Sedras passed away on January 29, 2024, at the age of 72. Tony Sedras was a musical genius who left a lasting legacy in the world of jazz. He will be dearly missed by his family, his friends, and his fans. We thank him for his music, his spirit, and his inspiration. Rest in peace, Tony Sedras. Number 6. Hector Sanabria Hector Sanabria was born on August 17, 1945, in Mexico City. He started his football career as a defender for UNAM Pumas, the team of the National Autonomous University of Mexico. He played for Pumas from 1965 to 1978, making over 300 appearances and scoring 12 goals. He was part of the Pumas team that won the league title in 1977, the first in the club's history. Sanabria also represented Mexico at the international level, earning seven caps for the national team. He was selected for the 1968 Summer Olympics in Mexico City, where he played in all four matches as Mexico reached the quarterfinals. He also played in the 1970 World Cup qualifiers, but missed out on the final squad. After retiring from playing, Sanabria became a football manager. He coached several teams in the Mexican League, including Pumas, Toluca, Veracruz, and Atlante. His most successful spell was with Pumas, where he led them to a runners-up finish in the 1987-88 season, losing the final to America on penalties. He was known for his tactical acumen and his promotion of young players from the club's academy. Sanabria died on January 29, 2024, at the age of 78, after a long illness. He is remembered as one of the most influential figures in Puma's history, as well as a respected and admired member of the Mexican football community. He left behind a legacy of passion, dedication, and excellence in the beautiful game. Number 7. Anthony Cordesman Anthony Cordesman was born on August 1, 1939, in Chicago, Illinois. He earned his BA from the University of Chicago, his MA from the Fletcher School at Tufts University, and his PD from the University of London. He had a distinguished career in government, academia, and think tanks, serving in various positions, such as National Security Assistant to Senator John McCain, Civilian Assistant to the Deputy Secretary of Defense, Director of Intelligence Assessment in the Office of the Secretary of Defense, Professor of National Security Studies at Georgetown University, and Fellow at the Woodrow Wilson International Center for Scholars. He was also awarded the Department of Defense Distinguished Civilian Service Award for his analysis of the Yom Kippur War in 1974. Cordesman was best known for holding the Arle A. Burke Chair in Strategy at the Center for Strategic and International Studies, CSIS, where he was a prolific and influential author of over 50 books and numerous reports on U.S. security policy, military strategy, energy policy, and the Middle East. He was an expert on a number of global conflicts, such as the Iraq War, the Afghanistan War, the Iran nuclear deal, and the Israel-Palestine conflict. He was also a frequent commentator and advisor on national and international media outlets, such as CNN, BBC, NPR, and the New York Times. He was respected for his unflinching honesty and candor, as well as his deep and creative thinking on some of the most challenging problems of our times. Cordesman passed away on January 29, 
2024, at the age of 84, leaving behind a remarkable legacy of scholarship and service. He was a towering figure in national security circles, who dedicated his life to strengthening America and advancing a peaceful world. He also mentored many young professionals who were inspired by his career and vision. He was described by CSI's president and CEO John J. Hamry as one of the most prolific and engaged scholars we have had in over 25 years. Number 8. Iskandar Safa Safa was born in Beirut in 1955 into a Maronite Christian family. He studied civil engineering at the American University of Beirut and then moved to the United States and Saudi Arabia to work in the public work sector. In 1982, he graduated with an MBA from INS EAD, one of the world's leading business schools in France. Safa started his career as a businessman in 1986, when he became the president of Tricorp International, a company involved in various projects in the Middle East and Africa. He also played a role in the negotiations for the release of French hostages in Lebanon in 1988, as he had connections with the Lebanese political and religious leaders. In the 1990s, Safa and his brother Ekram founded Privinvest, a shipbuilding company that specialized in naval and commercial vessels and mega yachts. Privinvest acquired several shipyards in France, Germany, Greece, and the United Arab Emirates, and became a supplier of naval forces for many countries, including France, Germany, Greece, Saudi Arabia, and Mozambique. Privinvest also developed innovative technologies in the fields of marine renewable energy, surveillance, and security. Safa was also interested in the media and the political scene. In 2015, he bought Valmond, a French media group that publishes the conservative wiki magazine Valeurs Actuelles, which often takes anti-Islamic and anti-feminist stances. In 2019, he attempted to take over the regional newspaper Nice Matin, but withdrew his offer due to a competing bid and the opposition of the editorial staff. Sadly, Iskandar Safa passed away on January 29, 2024, at the age of 68, after battling a serious illness. Safa was a discreet and influential tycoon who amassed a fortune of 1.45 billion euros according to the magazine Challenges in 2023. He was married and had four children. He owned several properties and hotels in the south of France, where he spent his last days. He was described by his colleagues and friends as a visionary, a warrior, and a knight. He will be remembered as one of the most successful and controversial figures in the naval industry and beyond. Number 9. Sandra Milo Sandra Milo was born as Salvatrice Elina Greco in Tunis, French Tunisia, on March 11, 1933. Her father was a Sicilian engineer who moved the family to Italy when she was three years old. She married a Marquis at the age of 15, but soon divorced and pursued a career in modeling and acting. She made her film debut in 1955, alongside Alberto Sordi in The Bachelor. Her first major role came in 1959, in General Della Rover, directed by Roberto Rossellini. She also worked with other renowned filmmakers, such as Jean Renoir, Claude Sautet, and Pupi Avati. But her most memorable performances were in the films of Federico Fellini, who discovered her talent and cast her as the sexy and life voted mistress of Marcello Mastroianni in Eight and a Half the Oscar-winning film that explored the creative crisis of a film director. She reprised her role as Fellini's muse in Juliet of the Spirits, where she played the eccentric neighbor of Giulietta Messina, Fellini's wife. Milo and Fellini had a secret love affair that lasted for 17 years, which she revealed in her autobiographical book, Caro Federico. She also became a popular television personality and talk show host in Italy, and later returned to acting in more mature roles. She received the David D. Donatello Career Achievement Award in 2021 and continued to work until her last film, Voyages Extraordinaires, 
in 2018. She died in her sleep at her residence in Rome on January 29, 2024, at the age of 90. She is survived by her three children and her beloved dogs. Sandra Milo was a versatile and charismatic actress who left a lasting mark on Italian cinema and culture. She will be remembered as one of the most beautiful and fascinating women of the silver screen. Number 10, David Smith, Bishop. David Smith, a former Anglican Bishop of the Church of England. David Smith was born on July 14, 1935, in Hertfordshire, England. He attended Hertford Grammar School and King's College London, where he studied theology. He was ordained as a priest in 1959 and served in various parishes in the northeast of England. He became the Archdeacon of Lindisfarne in 1981 and then the Bishop of Maidstone in 1987. He was also the Bishop to the Forces from 1990 to 1992, overseeing the chaplaincy of the British military. In 1992, he was appointed as the Bishop of Bradford, a role he held until his retirement in 2002. As a bishop, he was known for his pastoral care, his ecumenical spirit, and his involvement in social issues. He was a member of the House of Lords from 1997 to 2002, where he spoke on matters of justice, peace, and human rights. He was also a fellow of King's College London and received an honorary doctorate from the University of Bradford. After his retirement, he continued to serve as an honorary assistant bishop in the Diocese of York and the Diocese of Europe. He was married to Mary and had a son and a daughter. He died in January 2024 at the age of 88. David Smith was a faithful and dedicated servant of God and the Church who touched the lives of many people with his wisdom, compassion, and humility. He left behind a rich legacy of ministry and leadership and a lasting impact on the communities he served. He will be remembered as a man of prayer, a man of peace, and a man of God. As we conclude this tribute, we extend our deepest condolences to the families, friends, and fans of these extraordinary individuals. While they may no longer be with us, their legacies live on. If you found this video meaningful, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe for more updates. Your engagement helps us continue honoring the memories of those we've lost. Thank you for being part of the Celebrities Who Died Today community. Until next time, may their souls rest in peace.